Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. You might have seen this motherboard in my last video. It's an ECS P5 SED B Plus motherboard based on the VIA MVP3 chipset. So it's a Super Socket 7 board, that means it has an ADP slot. It's a rated at 100 meter bus and it takes Socket 7 and Super Socket 7 CPUs. So, for example, uh, I have this deleted K62, should be 450, written 2.2 volt, it might be 2.4, it was deleted some 20 years ago. I found it in school, stepped on it on the floor, so all pins were bent, but yeah, must have been pretty good at unbending pins back then, because they look really good. Anyways, this CPU ran a no ordinary socket 7 board at 2.8 volts instead of the 2.2 for years, so but the only CPU I have to test with right now is free. So this board is untested and I got it from a friend because he wants to do some modifications to some CPUs. So the plan is to make sure this board works so we have a board to test on and to do the modifications. So to be able to run his CPUs we need the K62 Plus support and this motherboard is from 98 and uh, then the K62 Plus and 3 Plus came out in 2000. So there is an unofficial BIOS for this board. We can flash and we solve the K62 Plus and 3 Plus problems and uh, support for that. We'll also add some, some um, extra performance probably to the K6 line overall. There's some things that, they, that BIOS enables that is not enabled by default in the BIOS on this board. So the plan is uh, a recap of this board. So I've sourced some caps. I have a few different types here. I took what I had left. Uh, so yeah, so the small ones uh, aren't really an issue. Uh, for the big ones, all of these big ones are a thousand microfarads, uh, 6.3 volts. So I got a couple of 1500s, 10 volts uh, to 1000, 10 volts, a couple of. Uh, 1000 uh, Philips here, 10 volts low ESR, plus I got another 4 here. So, yeah, that should cover everything we need. So, we can have like the Philips on the V core side, and uh, over here, I got the uh, over here, we got the IO voltage 2.3 or 2.52, and then we got our bulk incoming caps here for, from 5 volts. We can use the uh, big use these, use the big ones, slightly oversized here for the incoming for the v-core for the vrm and uh, the thousand ones the matching ones to 3.3 and 3.3 3.52 incoming 5 volt here so that's the plan for the recap also i have another motherboard we can look at we can look here first and zoom in some other mods i would like to do I have already done that on another board, so I have that board here, we can look at that. But there are some empty pads here and here. I think this is V-Core side and this should be, well it could be the other way around, I have measured before. But uh, one side is V-Core, one side is IO voltage, so that's the, this is IO voltage, 3.3 or 2.52. So over here is uh, V-Core side, so it's anywhere from 2.0 volt to 3.52 volts. So these empty spaces here should be for caps. We have CT22, CT21, it's also one over here. C should stand for cap, I don't know about the T, been looking around. There are other caps on the board, that's just I think CM. So they, they use another letter after the C for something. But I measured these, they go to ground and V-core or IO to each pairs. So what I want to do is add some uh, filter caps there, ceramic ones. I have another board. So I have this board. This is a, uh, it's a DFI LAN party in Force 2 Ultra. Quite capable board but with some annoying quirks. It uh, runs 500 meter bus on a unlocked 2005 plus Atlon XP and I have DDR500, these are not that though, but I have that. I ran this, bus, this the bus of memory at 500, Mentest and Paranet 5 stable, but the AGP and PCI 
nothing in here or uh, not even the idea controller everything on that side it doesn't even like 450 bus and so for some reason this wasn't a good board for making a permanent build it's uh, kind of a suicide board it works really well for a cpu and ram but uh, a bit finicky to get through 3d mark with the uh, agp bus sometimes flipping out so doesn't happen on 400 megahertz which is supported haven't tried where the limit is but anyway what i did to this board other than putting on some oversized caps because the caps were already replaced this is one out of four boards from that previous owner and he was a competitive overclocker so the caps had already been replaced by caps from another one of his two dead donor boards but we can see here at the back here also caps installed these were installed from factory and this one and these ones and that one's a little crooked i installed those there are the same arrangement inside the socket also four missing four installed so i did that on this board and uh, i installed uh, some like i said bigger louis r phillips caps and uh, from my testing it seems the cpu runs about 20 30 meters faster slightly lower v core on this one than another recap asrock board so it isn't well supersized caps and extra, extra filtering so i figured you do the same on this uh, on this board here because uh, why not uh, i got the spare from uh, the, when i did other board so that's one thing i want to do to this one so i read the data sheets for the k62 pluses and k62 pluses and in this recommendation is basically fill the socket with caps so i don't see they could hurt another area of interest is over here we got the ding connector it's uh, this one this is a keyboard these three pads plus uh, like six pads in here or two holes and the interesting thing is you flip it over it's so basically it looks the same as this one so we also got three here we got the pads here and we also got the pins back here for the dim connector but the interesting thing is if we take a dead router if we have some dead router board I like to use for spare parts and practicing so this is uh, well it wasn't dead from the beginning but it's dead now I'm too sure no, no CPU. Yeah. I use these when I throw routers away, like really old ones, no uh, one wants, and like ADSL and stuff. So they, they're good, like just to practice on and so on. But on this one, we got the connector here. So this connector is basically a PS2 connector. We got the, our center pin used of those three, big one for anchoring it in, and then we got our six pins at the back. So we take the motherboard again. So we can see that that's the hole there. And then we got our six pins here, four in our line with one extra on either side here. And we got the same over here. And we also got the same over here. So the interesting thing is if we wanted to, we can actually completely convert this 80 board to 8x. Not gonna do that, but we could technically make it 8x because well, I have an 8x case that I bought with 80 adapter kit and they basically fit into an 80 case. You need a custom mire bracket if you want to cover the holes. Otherwise, you just get a big hole, just like with your ordinary 80 80x motherboard. Slightly more open though. But I'm, I'm not gonna remove this one. I want uh, to be able to use my uh, 80 keyboard. I got a really nice one with some blue ALF switches. But uh, I do want to install this PS2 connector here because behind it here behind uh, where we can put the connector is a header and that's a ps2 header now the, i noticed they don't seem to be standard like i had to on another system change the pin out on the actual cable cable harness so that's the one annoying thing i have to know the pin out and then make sure it matches with your adapter uh, if they come with the board so if we installed a ps2 connector here we can use an ordinary PS2 mouse with no adapter cable, which obviously looks nice inside the case too. And not all, but a lot of case, 80 cases, and mine do, they have an extra hole for a PS2 mouse. 
so I can just uh, poke uh, out the, the metal piece covering the hole and uh, I can use this. And if, if you don't have a hole, you could technically just drill one in your case in the right position. So, yeah, I, I don't know why I didn't install one. Like, it, it's, uh, I, I don't know if it's a popular mod. My friend did the same mod to his board not long ago. So, yeah. So that's what I want to do too. So I want to kind of like update this board. I'm taking new caps, uh, new BIOS, uh, SMD caps in the socket, and a uh, PS2 connector for the mouse. Should make this board uh, a lot more usable with uh, wider CPU support, better performance, uh, ease of use, and just uh, make sure it lasts longer. So the next thing is we do is test the board because with the, if it's not broken, we need to fix it first. So it actually posts. So I'm gonna hook it up and we're gonna try it. And if it posts and so on, I'm gonna flash the BIOS first so we get that out of the way. So we have the the unofficial patched BIOS with the, it also supports larger hard drives than 32 gigabytes up to 128. So that's also so also nice. So yeah, let's test this board, rig it up and see if it posts. So let's power this thing up. Put the Eforce 2 in from my last video. Case is to 400, so it's a, a jumper for a 450, but whatever. Uh, graphics card sound like the fans dying. So, but uh, it posts, so that's good. So yeah, the board is posting, so we can move on with the flashing it. So I'm gonna hook up a hard drive to it. So we are in Windows. I had to up the V core to 2.4 volts because uh, I was, there, there are 2.4 volts uh, K62s also, and this seems to be one of them. So I don't have the IHS installed anymore. It's been lost for 20 years, so and I haven't used the CPU for 20 years. So I wasn't sure about the V-Core, but 2.2 was not stable at all, so... Bit of an install of a hard drive and so on, so in Windows here, and it, it's a 450, so the BIOS is reporting 400, so that's wrong. And put together a patch here, this bin file is the, the BIOS, and we're got, gonna use UniFlash. And we can read the patch notice here for the... Uh, for the BIOS, so it's for my motherboard obviously. And uh, it's gonna enable us to run K62 and 3 plus CPUs. And it also says uh, original K6 are not fully supported. Uh, it doesn't support right allocation, it doesn't see the speed above 500. Mine doesn't go, doesn't show 400, so that should probably solve that. And I suppose right allocation probably improves performance. Uh, yeah, and I got a CTX according to, to CPUC, so probably why it's not reported incorrectly. So yeah, the, the support out of the box is a little bit poor on this motherboard, and there were there are no newer biases as far as I can tell. Then we can get 30, go from 32 gigabyte to 128 gigabytes here, but there are a couple of bugs mentioned here, so you have to let the dis disk get out to take the by the motherboard to use that support. No manual settings of hard drives for it to work. Over 64, I think it said. Yeah, so there, there are some uh, some good bug fixes with this BIOS. So let's uh, reboot it and go in, use failsafe command prompt. Go into DOS and flash it. So we just boot into safe command prompt uh, here in DOS. So we're in pure DOS environment, nothing else loaded. So we're gonna. Okay, we need to go into UF140, this is UniFlash. UniFlash. And then we need the file. Let's do a backup first. 
Yeah, I'm back up big. Uh, let's see here. I suppose it's done. So nothing. Flash image. Including boot block. Image name. Okay, so that. Uh, okay, enter that. I vaguely recall how I just uh, having to type it after the program. Yeah, boot block. So yeah, this is a universal flasher. It's kind of nice when uh, when uh, the ordinary programs a word flasher doesn't want to play ball and stuff. So I think we're done already. So let's quit and hope it boots. Well, it booted there, so that's good. Well, let's power cycle it because we didn't see the CPU there. Yeah, now we have a 450, so that solved that issue. Well, it doesn't really matter, but it's just convenient to know when you're fiddling with the jumpers. So, and we have 1.1K, we had 1.1 something else, B or something before. So now we should have a new, much better BIOS. So I should actually be able to use my hard drive. I'm using a compact flash card right now. It gives me all kind of problems, the ID on this motherboard. But I have a plan to solve that when I build a system on it. But we have a flash BIOS now, so that's good. So, kind of pointless. Uh, well, I could unbrick it if I had bricked it, this time, but I don't have an EEPROM burner. But I could obviously buy one or hot burner ship or something. But uh, yeah, nice to have the flash out of the way now. So yeah, next thing is to recap it. Have the board on the board heater so we can start removing the caps. So let's see here. Got the board up to 75. Yeah, 75 and 6 centigrade. And I got my iron. Uh, set to 230 C and I got a 4.8 millimeter tip and the reason for that is that you can uh, You can get to uh, uh, Two Legs at the same time much easier to remove that way So I'm just gonna tin and clean my tip a bit you should always clean it before Every time you take it out stand make sure and uh, you want one of these, you don't want uh, the sponge with the water. Yeah, I just think it oxidizes the tip. So, let's see here if I can get to this. So I want to touch both of them and then add some leaded solder here. And the cap fell out. Now the cap's gonna get cooked on the, on the hot plate soon, so I need to remove that. But you can see the heating up the board with the hot plate. How easy it is to get them out. So I'm just gonna remove that and remove the caps. Also uh, cleaning out the holes with the with the this one, the sucker, what I call it. It's also a lot easier. It's, uh, the heat is even more important than the board then. So Sometimes you need to pull it out anyway. If the legs aren't perfectly straight, it tends to get stuck. I have an image for where the caps goes, the values and all of that. I'm gonna put it up on the screen so you can see it. And if you want to download a copy, um, we got a database now on our Discord server. And uh, if you go into the Discord server, you can also take part in a competition coming up for uh, where my friend is giving away a uh, Voodoo 3, it's a Quake 3 competition and it's uh, not gaming in Quake 3, mm -hmm. you need to be able to game, but it's more about uh, benchmarking Quake 3, so you can uh, check out the link, uh, braindrainland.tk in the description and uh, 
for in there and uh, there should be information up soon on how to take part in that and then he will give the winner of the competition a good tree so that's interesting so that's the VRM caps removed Let's see if we can clean that up also if you have to like I don't think you have to now but if you have a hard time getting the solder out, it's always a good idea to just add more. It seems illogical, but adding new fresh solder helps when the old one is oxidized. So, yeah. And I also like to touch both holes, even if it's going to suck heat out of one, it's because it helps getting more heat into the board. And if you're lucky, you get in both of them at once, which I did there. I also put a bit of uh, bit of silicon hose on this thing. You can buy that in RC stores on Nitro Cars. That's where I got mine. I think you can. They, they're also suckers with that included. But if you have one, that's all you need, and it's like 10 euros or like a meter about a yard, so it's gonna last you forever. And it's good for all kind of things. So you can use it as spacers if you're mounting a heatsink or something, as insulation and stuff, and. It's it works as a spring because it's so soft, but it's also can put up a bit of force. You can use it as a spring and a spacer. So I use it for when I need to adapt a cooler to something sometimes. So you can see here, I would uh, recommend if you want to do soldering, fixing your board and graphics card to get like a 5mm tip. For, this is 4.8, I think I can buy 5.62, but 4.8 is still fine because the radial mount is five millimeters so it's enough yeah So the caps have been removed, so we can add some uh, new caps to the board. So I'm going to start adding uh, some low ESR uh, uh, Philips to the V core side of things. So they are the same as the old one, except they, I think these are nope, exactly the same, slightly shorter though. But not necessarily a bad thing with a cramped socket. This is extremely cramped, this board, so I suppose every bit helps. using a 2.4 millimeter tip for this seems to be easier 1.6 works but it's, it's kind of small it's easier to sink the heat into the cap 
you can get away with a big tip, so I usually say the biggest you can get away with. I should obviously not be so big so it's difficult, but yeah. I want the big as big as yeah, that is improving things and making it easier for you. 1.6 is usually what you get with your iron if you buy buy a station, so it's always a good idea to get like a five millimeter and like around two and a half. And it should be you have to chisel type like a old screwdriver. There are other types that are also good, but the, the, the of the generic ones those are better. The pointy ones are kind of crap. And now I'm gonna go a little bit oversized on these because that's what I have. Shouldn't be an issue now. This one is also a thousand, but this is a, it's 10 volts, it's like a taller, but that's fine. It's about the same height as the VRM, so that's VRM heatsink, so they look good. So we have new caps all around, so time for some modifications before we clean this board up because it's really, really dirty. So I want to start in the socket here, adding those uh, SMD caps in there. So I'm going to remove the old solder here, just uh, adding some Amtec flux here just to make my wick work better. This is mostly to make it easy to get a get a mounted flush. You could obviously hot air them on, but uh, well, don't want to kill the socket. You could make a protection for the socket, but anyway, I think yeah, because there's only two contact points on it, it should be fine. Might not look as good as using hot air, but yeah. So I got the Eason took out, uh, the same I showed on the LAN party board, 417 nanofarads, 0.47 microfarads. So. They should reduce the ripple on the V-core and I-O voltage. And I figure this is socket and over there is the VRM for the I-O. So it has to travel all the way down to here. But no caps in between as I can for a second tell. Nothing real substantial, so it should probably help with the ripple a little bit. Could probably use much bigger ones here, judging by the gap here. But anyways, blob of solder later should solve that.
So, a little bit small, but uh, that works. It should offer some uh, ripple suppression. So the next thing to do would be the PS2 connector. So we need to free up those holes on the board. So I'm just gonna try to hot air this thing off, see if that works. Without melting it. task is to free up the holes and I preheat the board I don't think we need to do that one Fill that again. Small gap there, it's like a spring, so that might help us get it in now. I don't want to push too hard, it should drop somewhat in place so you don't damage the PCB. Let's solder it in and hope it works. I 
that's how they connected it up. It's uh, not 100% li looking like the typical ones, but uh, it works. Uh, I tested a keyboard in it. So keyboard and mouse used the same. So I know it fits, so it should be working. And the problem is I was thinking take one from motherboard, but uh, they're usually too high, you know, to PS2 put in one, so <laughs> that didn't really work out. And behind here we still have the PS2 two pin header if we want to use an internal one. So, so we got our new caps and uh, electric, and we got our SSD caps, and we got our PS2 mouse port installed. I don't think there's any more to mod on this now. The bias is flashed. So it's time for a good clean because this board is sturdy like uh, everywhere around here. and. I don't know if you can see, but down here on this side of all the slots is like brown, quite literally dirty. So it's gonna need a good wash. But then we can test it again. It should still be fine and working and all that. So the system is up and running, and I've been uh, running 3D Mark uh, 2000 for a few hours now. I had to take a phone call, so I was interested in see how well 3D Mark 2000 runs. I didn't mention it before, but I did run uh, 3D Mark just to figure out the score before, and it took three attempts to get through 3D Mark. I had two crashes to desktop with no error, and uh, I ran some Prime 95 to check on the CPU, and it seems fine. And so now after the recap, this thing has been looping for hours, and I actually upped the memory timings and stuff like that because I left that at default. So, I can only suspect that uh, the caps were bad. Uh, I've seen this kind of issues when the graphics card is overclocked, but since I fixed this card like the other week and uh, it looked just fine in a Pension 3 motherboard, I suspect maybe the cap next to the AGP slot was bad, and probably the other ones too. So that might have caused some instability maybe with the graphics card. But yeah, I haven't changed anything other than uh, lowering memory from CAS 3 to 2 and so on. Just to get a little bit higher score. Um, around 2200 points now from just over 2000 on stock settings. Which isn't great, not for that graphics card, but uh, with a, with a K6250 you ain't getting much because the CPU doesn't have any on die L2 cache. So with a K6 2 plus or 3 plus we should get a lot more. I think the world record is over 5,000 points, I think. So, we're doing a screen capture here, and... Uh, yeah, two more has been looping for a while, but we got 2,281 points. I think I got like... 2,050 or 2,080 something, with uh, the BIOS that back to the default when it comes to RAM. So yeah, not too bad for... Uh, ordinary K62. The graphic card is obviously much more capable, but uh, that's not the point right now. So let's close this. And we can go here. Device manager. Mouse. And I'm running a PS2 mouse now. I had a USB mouse installed before. With one uh, of those uh, IO brackets uh, put in your case. So I can report that the mouse is working just fine. I didn't expect much trouble with that, but yeah. So that's a nice mod. And yeah, so far the board has been really stable. Before, when I installed uh, with old caps, I had a blue screen during Windows with the proper voltage for the CPU. I got, uh, had, like I said, I had problems running 3D Mark 2000, and that seems to work right now. I wasn't sure the cast would actually fix those problems, I figured it might have been software, but it uh, seems like that wasn't the cause. And we obviously have the ceramic caps here installed, so that might have done some good too. So, I figured we'd try some Quake 3 benchmarking. So I did install a sound card because that really affects the performance, so to get some, well, fair numbers. I want sound cards, so I installed my A64. And I'm gonna run my friend's uh, personal uh, tweet quite three here, so it's gonna look like crap. But uh, yeah, I can compare to his uh, SuperSocket server system. He got a K63 
I think it's a 500 at 616 or something megahertz with a GeForce 256 DDR. So you're gonna see here what I can get. And uh, it's just running a bad file it created just to free up some memory, I think. So let's see. So yeah, the texture, te textures have been uh, compressed and repacked. The executable I compiled, so I used that. And then there are some, uh, you can select DLLs, but uh, right now I'm using the K6 optimizer DLLs. Got 78.4, so not too bad for a K6.2. And it looks kind of weird when you benchmark like that, but uh, we can try some uh, single play just to show how it actually looks. Looks kind of broken when you benchmark it with so many tweaks. So, put the FPS counter on here. So, let's see, we're in the low 50s. And hitting over 100 sometimes. So, yeah, if we could overclock the CPU to like 600 megahertz, it would be pretty fine. But I'm not going to try this on the CPU. Do I have a weapon? Yeah. So alright, that's uh, Quake 3 tweaked. I'm actually disabling the frame count up apparently improved performance, which makes sense. Let's go to run. So that's the restoration of the ECS PSDB Plus. We installed new caps and we installed some ceramic caps in the socket. We added a PS2 port for the mouse. We flashed the BIOS to support K62 Plus and 3 CPUs. Also getting full support for K6s overall and some hard drive, high, better hard drive support and some bug, other bug fixes. And uh, yeah, the board seems perfectly stable now and it uh, should be ready for the next step in the project which is uh, to modify some CPUs for my friend. So once they get here I can make a video about that. And once that's done, the plan is to put this board in with at least a K6 to plus 500, which I already have. Maybe something faster, depends on how things go. And uh, if you want to have a chance to win a Voodoo 3, you can check out our link, braindrainland.tk. My friend who donated this board to me, and uh, the Quake 3 version we ran there, is having a Quake 3 contest. So you can win a Voodoo 3 there if, you're, if you get the highest frame rate in Quake 3. So join our Discord, find out about the rules. Should be up this weekend I hope. Probably a day or two after uh, this video comes up I hope. That's the plan. So hopefully it gets that done. So yeah, thank you for watching and have a nice day.